This presentation is over the Dirty War, which was a period of state terrorism in Argentina from 1976 until 1983. Now, state terrorism is defined as an act of terrorism conducted by a state, not meaning an American state like Florida or Iowa, but rather a state as in an independent nation, uh, when a state performs an act of terrorism against its own people. That is what state terrorism is. Um, now, this during this period, there was a lot of violence performed by the state on various groups that they did not support, which all this, this situation arose because of a man named Juan Perón. Um, in 1955, he was overthrown. He was a former president of Argentina, and in 1955 he was overthrown and exiled, and during this time he went to France, but um, when he got exiled, it started this movement called Peronism, which is based on Juan Perón and his beliefs of some communist tenets and some fascist tenets. Um, during this time, several groups started up, uh, guerrilla groups, that followed some Peronism, and some of these groups include the Uteruncos, the People's Guerrilla Army, and the Montaneros, and there's a few more, but they're less important. Um, and most of these groups were Peronists. The Montaneros were Peronists. The Uteruncos were Peronists. The People's Guerrilla Army were Guevarists, meaning they followed Che Guevara, but... Um, they are less important. Uh, the Montaneros themselves, they were a group that was a left-wing, uh, far-left-wing Peronist group, and uh, they were mostly Roman Catholic, was the majority of their religion. Um, now, during the time that Juan Perón was gone, many different armed guerrilla groups started to form, and some of them joined together, several joined the Montaneros and enlarged their group, and some joined uh, the FAL, or Fuerzas Armadas de Liberación. Uh, all these people started to go together and form these guerrilla groups, but nothing very important happened until Juan Perón returned to Argentina in 1973, and during this time, when Juan Perón was actually returning, the actual day of his return, the thing called the Ezeza Iz Ezeza massacre occurred, and what happened was the uh, some snipers fired on the left wing supporters of Peronism, and this caused the alliance between the left-wing and right-wing Peronists that had formed during Peron's exile, uh, it caused that alliance to break up. So this caused a very unstable situation, and Peron actually only stayed in, er, Peron was only actually back in Argentina for a year from 1973 to 1974 and before he died and shortly before his death he removed his support of from the Montaneros which formerly he supported them because they supported Peronism but in near the end of his uh, reign in Argentina he withdrew all of his support from the left wing which the Montaneros were so he no longer supported the Montaneros and then 1974, Juan Perón died, and after his death, his widow and the government decided that they would attempt to annihilate the left-wing subversives of the government. And the subversive means they would try and change something in the government. They were trying to achieve change that would go in left-wing policy favor instead of the right-wing and the government did not like that. And so this man named uh, Videla, he actually, uh, Jorge Rafael Videla, he 
started a systemized persecution of the Argentine people because he didn't uh, want the left-wing supporters to continue doing what they're doing, so he started a systemized persecution of them called the National Reorganization Process, which is actually making people disappear into concentration camps and killing them and taking them away from their families. So it was horrible. And uh, 9,000 to 30,000 people, they're not entirely sure. They think somewhere around 13,000 is the best estimate. Um, is the amount of people that were disappeared, quote-unquote, during the Dirty War. Um, and the Dirty War itself, why it's called the Dirty War, is because the Dirty War is d dirty, yes, because it's uh, it was a horrible thing, but it's called a war because the government was trying to sort of hide the fact that it it had done a lot of awful things to its people. It was trying to claim it was under a civil war and that it was trying to protect its government. But the truth is that the guerrilla groups that had formed during this time probably never would have actually done much to the government and their actions probably were not justified to actually go out and make these people disappear. Um, this is a large problem after the Dirty War. Um, after they started investigating what had happened, a lot of soldiers tried to claim under Jus in Bello, or Jus in Bello, I, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced, it's uh, Latin. Um, it relates to war laws, and basically it could have justified what they'd done had it been a civil war, but the fact that it was not under many courts' definitions a civil war. Um, means that the soldiers could not get protection from being prosecuted for what they've done. So uh, a lot of soldiers after the fact that it done that it helped uh, be a part of this disappearing, making people uh, kidnapped and killed from their taking them from their families and everything, uh, they couldn't get as much protection as they could have had it been a truly justified war, which it wasn't. Um, most of the people that were disappeared were involved with these guerrilla groups in some way, or at least were allegedly supporters of subversives, or the guerrilla groups. But, uh, it didn't take a whole lot of accusation to get these people to get disappeared. So... And Juan Perón, after his death, his successor was his wife, Isabel Perón. So, this, that was before Rafael, or uh, Jorge Rafael Videla took over. Um, Juan Perón's wife had a reign for a very short time. That's it. Hope you could follow along. <laughs>